Hey everyone, two big news stories to come out of the Middle East this week, a part of the rod that's divided upon multiple disagreements, Islam versus Judaism, Russia versus America, whether or not a star should have five or six points, or whether you should just depict a big weapon on your flag because nothing symbolises a 21st century peace-loving nation better than a big shiny sword. First for Israel, though, where a tied election led to a stalemate after Benjamin Netanyahu received slightly fewer votes than he was needing. Uh, him and Benny Gantz would both love to form a winning coalition with smaller parties, but then I'd love to own a Lamborghini. Tough life doesn't work like that. Unless, of course, you live in Italy, where I think a Lamborghini is the minimum bribe acceptable for selling out and going into a coalition. Alas, the past three and a half thousand years have taught us that things are a bit more complicated than the promised land and are likely facing another election. Lucky them, I guess. History is indeed interesting out there, though. When the kingdoms of Israel and Judah split apart, there was no BBC question time for the people to have to suffer through. When the Assyrians came through promising to kill everyone they kept to their election promises. Though you look at bearded, Hamas-loving Jeremy Corbyn, maybe things aren't so different after all. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia then. A massive oil processing facility was hit by a drone attack and subsequently celebrated by Houthi rebels in Yemen, the Iranians, as well as anyone who owns shares in BP or Royal Dutch Shell, because the two things to come out of the Middle East are profits with an F and profits as in money. How best to respond to a drone attack then? Well, President Trump offered up a nuclear strike. Go big or go home, I guess, before adding, quote, and there are options a lot less than that. Hmm. Probably are as well, you know. Oil prices had spiked in the news, and the US coincidentally became the world's largest oil exporter recently, so there's about a dozen strongly written conspiracy theories kicking about about what actually happened. Very fierce language too, so be careful if you're reading anything about it at work. You know, it's not just the oil that's crude. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.